Hello, AOS fans, Robin here, back with another Word Wednesday post. Yes, it's Word Wednesday, and I'm very, very excited about this word. I've been wanting to do it for ages. I've had these books for a little while now, since before Christmas, and I got very excited, and I was just trying to find the right time to do it, but all various other things have come up. But finally, finally, we're here. Today's word is element, and I've got my T-shirt, and I've got my mug, and I'm very excited, as you know, I mentioned in other posts, if you've just read the site, Scientist one last week, which put up here, scientist one last week, you know that I love Dmitry Mendeleev, and the reason I love Dmitry Mendeleev is because of the periodic table. Yes, here it is, the periodic table, two books. Now, I, I have millions of books about the periodic table, and you know, I could, I could bore you for a very long time, so I should just bore you for a short time about it. So I'm just going to review these two today, because these are fairly new, although they've both been out a little while, uh, but I've finally got the time to give them a good look over and really enjoy them. And to be honest, oh, I love them both. Let's start with this one. This one is from uh, my good friends at Doyle and Kindersley, and it's priced $14.99. And as usual, I forgot to do the US price, which is this much. Thank you. And yes, it's the period table. This one is aimed at, I would say, uh, sort of 11 plus age uh, it's very very pictorial and um, quite light science there is some science in here but it's quite light science and it goes through uh, in a typical Dorling Kinsley way with uh, lovely lovely pictures of all the elements and a description of how they uh, work so elemental building blocks how humans are made up and it talks about the scientist Robert Boyle who came up last week and it talks about the early Stages, earth, wind, and fire, and you know it's uh, chemical discovery. So we've got a little potted history in the introduction, and then Mendeleev and the table itself there. Uh, before going into hydrogen and lovely thing on hydrogen. So for each element, you can see we've got what it looks like, and then some interesting facts about it. The only waste product of hydrogen fuel is steam. So we've got a hydrogen bus there, hydrogen bomb explosion, rocket fuel, the sun, and uh, then we go into a uh, periodic table and it goes down the periodic table so it goes down these ways through the different uh, groups so starting with group one and the alkali metals and so some lithium so we've got lovely things that lithium does lithium batteries um, part of, sort of yeah, bar of pure lithium there and it goes on and on sodium as you might expect and then there's some natural wonders, so where they naturally occur, you've got a feature like that, so that's the salt flats in Peru there, before we go on to potassium. I'm not going to go through all 118 elements, it does have all 118, it has a little bit about the, the newer ones, how they were discovered, what they think they might be like. Uh, and then there's, uh, so there's, you know, so there's, it really is up to date. We've got cesium and francium there, and there's the scientists who discovered them. Francium, I didn't know, is the rarest natural element. The scientists think there are just 30 grams of francium in Earth's rocks. And then we go, uh, alkaline earth metals. And that's probably the most amazing thing about this book are the photos. I had no idea, for example, that calcium, you know, a crystal of calcium, as it were, uh, is. It would look like that, and that is incredible. And so this is my my son loves this book. Uh, it's really engaging for those kind of uh, early science, well, not very early science, but those kind of first chemistry steps, learning about the periodic table. It's hard to know. I'm very biased. There's something fascinating about the periodic table, and I think it appeals to everybody. Really, even if they they hate chemistry, there's something about the periodic table and the flame tests and the elements and everything that just interests people because they can relate to it. Carbon, we can relate to. Oxygen, we breathe. You, you can get that. I think I think nearly everybody likes that, and so this book taps into that uh, beauty. So there's another natural uh, thing there. The so there's a geyser there. Uh, it's calcium carbonate. So again, another natural wonder. And it just goes on and on. Strontium, barium, radium, then into the transition metals. So a big section of the transition metals and titanium. Titanium thing there. And you know I could go on. I mean, there's always there's no point in showing you anymore. Uh, because it's all amazing, and uh, it just talks about each element in turn: uh, palladium, silver, cadmium, hafnium. Who knows anything about hafnium? I didn't know. Don't know much about hafnium. Tungsten. Uh, so the light bulbs and tantalum. Um, and I'm just trying to get to the end. There we are. C borgium 106 there, um, and uh, minerium. 
Borium, Hassium, so these really high ones, a little bit so Mytnerium. Researchers think that Mytnerium might be the densest of all elements. It's very unstable, and even the atoms of its most stable isotope or, um, or form break apart in a matter of seconds. And it talks about these and Mytna there as well. And so um, there's Copernicium, but Copernicus. Uh, and it tells you a little bit about the people behind it, uh, who, who who identified them sometimes. And oh yeah, that 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 is just a lovely, lovely book. Uh, it's made with the uh, uh, Don his usual skill and excellence. And then in the back here, the piece of resistance for those who are a bit sad like me is a full colour elemental periodic table, uh, which now I've finished this review will probably go on my wall or my son's wall. And there's even a picture of Dimitri Mendeleev, my pinup scientist. There you go. So that is that one. I really like that book. I'm not going to put that in there now because I'll tear it. That one's by Dawn and Kinderley. This one is published by Aurum Press. And again, it's called The Periodic Table, a visual guide to the elements by Tom Jackson. This one's $20 or 29, sorry, 20 pounds or 29 US dollars. And it's by the appropriately known Aurum Press. And um, it's a little bit more grown up, I would say. I mean, again, my son's not enjoyed looking at it, but the information in the book is a little bit older and it's more infographic -y. Uh, which is why I like it. So you start again. We start with the uh, brilliant um, periodic table there in fabulous colours. And our Press did the uh, Geek Yearbook that we reviewed way back before Christmas. So uh, Pete, you can put the video up there. It'd be great for me. Thank you. And uh, so we've got a bit more of it. We've got about atomic structure at the beginning of this one. And it talks about quarks and leptons. Um, which again we've done the we've done the brick book. Which again, Pete, you could put the video up there. The brick book is another. If you want to go deeper into the atom, then that's a good book for that. Uh, but this one, uh, talk, I mean, it's got some really nice uh, things. Anybody can understand, can can relate to this. How big is an atom? There are 7.5 trillion carbon and hydrogen atoms in the full stop at the end of this sentence. That's roughly a thousand of every person on Earth. That is uh, quite an amazing thing to get your head round. Yes, so moving on from um, the uh, amount of atoms to the point, you go on to this, counting atoms, which I love. It talks about the mole, which for those of you who don't know, mole is the number of atoms in a, in a certain amount of uh, substance. So 12 grams of carbon has one mole in it. And that if, if uh, two moles of cats are the same number as 24 grams of carbon, if you had that number of cats, they would weigh the same as the Earth, uh, which I think is a lovely way of looking at it. And if you had a mole of a piece of paper, so the same amount of atoms, the same amount of pieces of paper as you had in... Uh, 12 grams of carbon, it would stack to make, uh, to go from the Sun to Pluto seven and a half million times. So there you go. And that's only cheap paper you buy from Poundland, I'm not talking the thick quality stuff. Um, so that, but this book is full of things like that. In between here, we've got little bits about each element and uh, the, each group of the elements. And uh, then it goes on and on and on and on. And brilliant. So this is the kind of shape of atoms. So it's good. It is the, the physics and the chemistry of it is a bit more complex than, uh, than in the Dawn and Kindersley one. This is more degree level, uh, A level maybe. Uh, and then we have a timeline of discovery where they were all made. Some, I was pleased to see some British ones here. And then, but they were only British after about 1898, uh, 1908, the British one. And then lots and lots of American ones, German ones, and Russian ones towards the end of the creation of all these new ones. And then there's a history of the table as it, uh, as it grew before moving into the big picture. So we have sizes of atoms. Uh, the density of atoms and the trends there, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the amount, relative abundances of elements on Earth, and the human body, how that's composed. And we go on and on and on in a good way. You can go on and on and on. That's like a terrible on and on in a good way. Hardness, um, strength of things, how well they conduct, um, how magnetism works. Uh, and then my, one of my favourite pages is all the spectra there. I don't know how well that'll come out, but all the spectra there of the uh, so that's uh, of the elements and how you identify them from their, their spectral wavelengths, uh, the origins of the elements, when and where they were made, um, and then then we go on about the chemistry of them. So again, more, more up to higher level chemistry stuff, mixtures, uh, radioactivity, radio radioactive doses the process of making a new element 
And we're not even halfway through yet, that's only page 99. So some organic chemistry and then pH, uh, gems, how gems are made up. So the different gems, so ruby, aluminium oxide, alexandrite, aluminium beryl oxide, emerald, beryllium aluminium, beryllium aluminium silicate. And then, and then after that, page 108, you have a directory of the elements, which is very similar to the Dorling Kinsley one, but with slightly more uh, diagrammatic illustrations rather than photographs. And again, it goes right up to the high level elements. At the end here, the transferium elements, so rather fordium, dubnium, seaborgium again, mitnerium again, and uh, right up to a number 118. And there you go. So I don't really want to go on and on about that. I could go on about them for longer. They are both lovely books. Uh, so this one I think is, is great if you're into chemistry and you're up at degree level or A level. Um, I'm not sure what the US equivalent of those exams are, but then this one is probably the one you want. Um, it's just I just love looking at it. It's so interesting on every page. And this one is beautiful for inspiring younger chemists who, who want to see what the periodic table look like. There are other books out there for that too, but this Don and Kinder Z one is brilliant. Um, I love it. And um, so that's it. So today's word was element, brought to you by our overly excited uh, Robin. And I hope you found that useful. I hope you might check these books out. If you have an interest in chemistry, I think you'll love them. Uh, I certainly do, as you can probably tell. And so that's it. So uh, thanks for that. Do let me know. I know I have got, I have got other great table books, but if you have a favorite, do let me know what they are. Uh, the Theodore Gray one is brilliant. I've got the, uh, he does elements, molecules, and reactions, and they're all great. So uh, check out those as well. Um, until the next World Wednesday, I'm not sure what we've got coming up for you. I think we might, and we've got science this week. We've had science last week. I think we might go a little more philosophical uh, in, in the next week. We shall see. We shall see. So take care until next time. I hope you found World Wednesday useful, and I will see you again soon. Bye.